The Bible relays a creation narrative that has two distinct sections. Scholars have debated about the differences, um, but what's not as not debated is the Bible clearly portrays the universe as having been created by Yahweh. There's a there is limited information as to how the me mechanisms of how he did it, because the Bible's main concern is about relationships, your relationship with God, God's relationship with you, his relationship with create his creation, your interpersonal relationships. A lot of people at the time that Darwin wrote saw Darwin's book as an out. They saw it as a way to finally throw off the, uh, the yoke of Christianity and go in their own direction. The discovery that the universe and all matter is finite, that means that it had a beginning. The discovery of the complex encoded information in DNA are just two data points that work against the conclusions of Darwinian evolution. The secular humanists have taken Darwin's idea of evolution and expanded it quite extensively. So they have two jumps that they, that they need to explain. The first jump is how did something go from nothing to there being something? The Big Bang, you might think about it that way. So excluding God, how could something go from nothing to there being something? That's the first jump. The second jump that neo-Darwinism uh, wants us to believe is how can no life all of a sudden create life? So, okay, fine. Let's, for argument's sake, let's say nothing, then something, and there were rocks and amoebas and maybe water and stuff like that. These, these aren't living things. Well, amoebas are living, so cancel that out. But rocks and water and air and gases, these aren't living things. How did, how did evolution, some sort of process, go from no life to life? The Bible displays or declares that God, Yahweh, is the creator God who created all other things, seen and unseen. And it is from this position that humans can go out and understand the world around them. They are quite unique in the animal kingdom. We have the ability to understand our surroundings and to perform uh, scientific exploration because our brains are such that we're able to understand and the world is created in such a way that it's discoverable. And it's quite adventurous. It's a, an adventure of science. So here's a quote from Colossians chapter 1, verse 16 to verse 20. For by him, him meaning Jesus, for by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. Now those words, when Paul is saying it, he's talking about unseen um, unseen uh, Elohim who have positions of authority as other countries' gods. All these things, all these dominions, all these seen and unseen things, all these things were created through him, Jesus, and for him. And he... Jesus, is before all things, and in him all things are held together or hold together, and he is the head of the body, which is the Christian church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might have and be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. So let me unpack that just a little bit. He's the head of the body. So in the Bible, the church, all the people that believe and have joined themselves to Jesus through believing in him, they are his body on the earth, doing good works, doing things to help remind people that God is still real and he still loves you and he still wants you to uh, think about him. And that's what Christians are supposed to be doing. We'll get into that more when we go into sociology. 
Um, Jesus is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. When human beings die, you might think that's natural. The Bible says no, death is not something that God made. Death is a consequence of being separated from God. If you watch the video we did last time, I talk a bit about that. So we're all born on this earth, separated from God. We have to find God at some point in our lives. We, we need to look for him and he's discoverable and he wants us to find him. Death was not part of the original plan, but because human beings turn away from God, death came. And this death has authority over us. All people die. The Bible says it's appointed once to die and then the judgment, as in like coming before God to see your maker. What Jesus did when he died on the cross was he broke the authority of death. God in human form died, went into the ground, got buried and broke free of death because he's God. He can't die. He can't um, be held by death. He has all the authority. So what he needed to do, why he needed to die, one of the reasons was to break the power of death over human beings to set them free from death. So anyone who comes to Jesus, their body may die, but Jesus is going to give them eternal life. This idea of death is not the end is a massive deal for Christians. You've got to understand for Christians, the Christian biblical worldview, death is not the end. There is an eternal afterlife with God or apart from God. 